Oh, hello. I hope you can hear me. And here's Sarah. Uh, ciao. Welcome. Ciao. Ciao, Sarah. Welcome. Uh, Sarah, you're in Milan? Yeah, I'm in Milan. I'm home. Okay, great. Well, I'm here in Rome. And uh, don't worry, everybody, we are speaking English today. <laughs> we started off with a little ah, video English. in okay. Italian. Okay. Yeah, we're speaking English. Is that okay? <laughs> uh, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes so, I always uh, prefer English rather than Italian. So uh, well, I, actually, actually, me too. <laughs> I think everybody knows that. Otherwise, I sound like Stanley <laughs> Ognio, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> So, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's wonderful to see you. And I'd like to start off with a question that we all know you, but we don't know you. We see Sara everywhere. You seem to be doing everything. But uh, I think most people watching this, we all grew up without fashion, without in our lives, without uh, design. And yet you grew up uh, in an ambience, probably very fashion and design in Milan. And did you ever rebel and how did you find your own unique way? Because you are quite, quite unique in the fashion industry and you've managed to find your way. Were you a rebellious teenager, perhaps? No, not, not at all, I have to say. I mean, uh, um, even though I grew up in a family that always uh, kind of created and did fashion, um, I have to say that I had really a normal uh, kind of, uh, um, you know, when I was like from 15 to 18, I went to school, had fun with friends, but I didn't really was conscious about my family in the business. You know, I don't think that that age you really consider mm. the work of your parents. So, I mean, right now I think it's a different generation, but that time it wasn't like that. So actually when I finished uh, school, um, I began University in Milan, which was foreign languages, literature and foreign languages, but I wasn't really a good student, not willing so much to study. So, but I, I was I was responsible, so I realized I didn't want to really lose too much time, time, myself, money, my parents, you know. So I wanted to start to work and I began to work with my mother that that time she opened uh, for a few years, Ten Corso Como. But then working with parents is not always easy. So yeah. it came really in a very candid and natural way saying, ah, uh, Franca works in a magazine, maybe she needs someone for intern, you know? So that's how everything started. But I didn't know really anything about fashion. I wasn't really even aware that I was going to work in the most uh, known fashion magazine in the world uh, and I think I know it sounds really strange but I have I swear I wasn't aware of this so I think this is something that also kind of saved me because anyway my family kind of always protected me to to find a way my personal way so obviously I started that in the best position that someone could you know uh, believe in, but um, I was lucky enough when we when I started. It was the 30th anniversary of the magazine, so uh, when I came in, they were preparing uh, a book that is still it's one of the uh, very beautiful book. So uh, Franca totally like locked me in the archive like for six or seven months, <laughs> and this is where I kind of absorbed the history of fashion and photography, and then. Um, my internship kind of lasted probably six or seven years or something. So I had, you know, the <laughs> opportunity to, to to really learn everything. I mean, it was it was mid nineties. It was totally different. Internet was beginning, and uh, it was a very slow way of seeing things. And that was very lucky of myself because I managed to to, to be working in all the departments of the magazine, trying to find my own way. And then um, I was assistant to my deputy director at that time. I began to go on photo sets, on photo shootings, you know, just bringing, you know, luggages and as assistant. But I was lucky enough to go on sets of Steven Meisel, Lindbergh, wow. and Bruce Weber. So I was very lucky. And then myself, I became assistant of fashion editors such as Anna De Russo and Alicia Gentilucci. I went on sets with Hamo Newton. I mean, I was very <laughs> lucky and, you know, kind of when I begin to say these things, I just realized really how lucky I was to do such experiences. And then I become stylist myself. And here it's where really I began, you know, my curiosity towards new generation and scouting. So 
this is more or less my my path and when you ask me how did i manage you know to find my my own way what it, it wasn't easy i mean because obviously you know coming from a from such a family i mean i never really thought about it but i wanted you know to find my way and uh, franca was a very extremely important person in my working career also personal career above i mean being my aunt but um you know she was someone that really wanted i mean if um, she was very exigent and once she realized that you wanted responsibility she would give in to you but not really explaining what you were up to do <laughs> so so that was a way of you know learning things and yeah. uh, and the way you know i then was born actually and this is what i love doing you know yeah. you know support the new generation well you've been opening the door ever since i mean you've been banging that door yeah. down i think you're you're the most visible person on the fashion circuit looking for the the new young people and obviously we've worked together on graduate fashion week and other events and it's so exciting i don't know how you find the energy to do so much but uh uh, we, we love having you around. Interesting to say that you were there in the early 90s at the birth of internet and how things started to wake up. So that brings us to the second question about where we are now with, with, with COVID and the acceleration of the digital process. You know, things have got really fast now. We're all digital. We're here talking uh, digitally and the variety of tools as well as a number of users. So what are the effects on the fashion community? Is, you know, is it a, be a good thing that we've become so digital, do you think? Well, that's a, it's not an easy question to answer because obviously digital, especially this last year, gave us you know, the chance to go on with our lives in a different way, but it gave us you know, the chance to go on with our work. And in a way, it gave us the opportunity to work in a, in a different way, think different, and try to um, even, I mean, th this is what happened to myself, to think about, you know, that what I was doing before, what what was working and what was not working. So I think it gave a really um, way to see things uh, in, a, in a more, you know, positive way, even if the period is not positive at all and, and it's very challenging. Uh, about um, digital, I mean, I think it's it's fantastic and it's it gives uh, so much opportunities. At the same time, at the same time, sorry, it kind of scares me because I agree that the human beings, human being, get really used to changes very quickly, and I see it myself. I haven't been on a plane since the first of March, and I was living on a plane. Me too. Maybe <laughs> maybe I realized that some of the trips I did was not so necessary. So I think I'm going to do more quality traveling when I will begin to travel again in a, when it will be safe and possible. But at the same time, it really detaches from reality because, I mean, um, I have different roles. I work obviously for the magazine where we were really like doing our events all physical. And the fact of turning completely digital, I just realized it's way much work because it takes time and then you know it doesn't leave you so much i mean this is my experience it gives a lot to the others but yourself it's not so satisfactory as before but this is a new way so the only way i would want to is to find a balance because i mean everything digital like last yesterday for example balenciaga launched its video game I mean, and it, it's funny, but at the same time, it scares me because I'm saying, I, I don't think we want to get used to this. You know, I, I mean, um, I'm, I agree about doing, um, you know, uh, quality and not quantity, less production, less is more. I mean, it's, that's important, but I do think that the interaction between people and seeing things, it's fundamental. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, likewise for myself, I was always flying. And now I'm thinking, will I fly again in the same way? Probably not. No. It'll be less, and I'll probably be doing more of this and less flight, probably. But we do need that, that interaction. And I think actually all our conversations are about that today. So what would you say are the new innovations, especially uh, in reality of uh, fashion communication? What are the new innovations, perhaps, that are bringing uh, new things to the innovation? You mentioned uh, Balenciaga. Um, is there anything new that you think is very positive or, or as you mentioned, perhaps 
we're losing touch of reality somewhere? Well, like last month, I mean, in October, I, I uh, had this, there was this circular fashion summit that it's a friend of mine that that um, organizes it and he did an extremely fantastic job and it was all in VR, in virtual reality. So you had your Google glasses and everything, which is like, I spent like two days like a kid, you know, having fun. <laughs> But after a while, I got fed up. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it was like getting into a room, like seeing Adrian shaking hands virtually. I mean, it was scary. <laughs> it was, it was, it was scary. I have to say. But at the same time, I think it gives so much, so much opportunity to who doesn't have the chance. I mean, just consider that you know, traveling has costs, and not everyone has yeah. you know the budget. So I think you have to see that as I said, always in the positive way and think about how much it can be accessible to those people which usually they don't have access to. So you have to see that positive way of seeing things, that this is going to give accessibility more to those people that didn't have the chance to access. So this is something very positive. Yeah, I, I love the idea that you felt like a child for two days. That's quite a privilege to feel childlike. And you, no, then you got I was, bored of it. it was something new. <laughs> yeah, but I got really yeah. bored very quickly, I have to say. Uh, you threw it away and then you wanted to play with the cardboard box because at the end, the cardboard box is the most interesting thing anyway for children. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So let's think about the fashion community and uh, how it's becoming more complex, perhaps. You know, before we had quite clear market segments and now age is becoming quite blurred gender less important and the communication industry obviously before we knew where it was uh addressing a certain market perhaps so how does fashion communication students stay ahead of that game where now we're never too sure where the market is it's quite a complex question no i know uh the thing is that right now i think that i mean the as I said, when there are challenging times, you also have to think that it's a way of changing things and make them to that works for your own. I mean, that you can create your own system. And I think that's what I'm telling designers, but it's the same about communication. I mean, it's, it is like a, right now, there are still some rules, but not quite. So you can really create your own way of seeing things and visionizing things. I mean, it's we don't need to be before it was like about, oh, I want to do this and then maybe think about, oh, but did anyone else already did it? Or maybe they think they copy. I mean, this doesn't really exist anymore because right now I think it's very important that you have to pass your message, your vision and, and what you really want to do. And, and the tools that you have are so much. I mean, think about Banally Instagram, YouTube, uh, well, now TikTok, but these are the most, but even consider Zoom, all the, I mean, you have so much way of doing things. So I don't think that you have to look about the classic, um, you know, uh, commercial rules that they were before. Obviously, there is a route that you have to do. There is, you know, like education is a pillar and you have to do it. But then you, when you are a student and then you go out from no from from university and you begun entrepreneur of yourself or you work for a you know for a big um, uh, for a big brand or a big uh, you know um, uh, entrepreneur it's I think it's uh, it's it becomes right right now already was important before but now your you know your principles and your own personal vision it's much stronger than probably a year ago it's much more important so I always you know tell to young students, I mean, to always really follow your instinct, your heart and, you know, and listen, but in the end, you have to listen to, to your heart and, and to what you really think. And this right now, it has a much more stronger value than before. Yeah. And, and before we had always such a physical presence, uh, and now everything, everything has become very, uh, segmented that we're partly physical partly online um as you were saying that we have so many different digital options do you think we're going to go back to a physical experience again in the same way ever well i was thinking that i mean uh yes we're gonna be going back 
to the physical way. The thing is that right now it's who's going to be the first one to do it because everyone is kind of afraid, yeah. like go, ah, oh, you start, no, you start, or oh, maybe yeah. I start. They're all like this. <laughs> so, I mean, as I said, now we got used for a year of, you know, not having any social, I mean, I don't think it's going to get normal if like I'm going to get an invitation for, I don't know, April and say, okay, go and travel, there's going to be a party. I mean, it's going, it's going to be quite strange, I have to say, very strange. So it's going to take time, but it's going to happen again, but in a very, very different way. Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe that might be quite positive that we won't take things like that for granted. I mean, I can't wait to uh, to travel again. But I think, as you said, maybe we'll be more selective and think about quality uh, rather than the quantity of journeys and events that we'll be attending. Exactly. Um, I think your diary must have always been really over full of events that you had to attend. Uh, yeah. And maybe in the future, the diary won't look so full because you'll have more online events perhaps to be t attending yeah, and, now it's and communicating just with. <laughs> now it's just full of Zoom calls. <laughs> yeah. It's people like me saying, let's talk, let's have a call. Because it's too easy. Right. So I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry no, we're always no, doing no, this. No, but, uh, but I think it's, it's, I mean, as I said, I miss traveling and it really beca is becoming really, really difficult right now, I have to say. But it's okay. I mean, I think the most important by now is to be healthy and good. So, um, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to take time. Yeah. Let, let's, let's talk one moment about students, because we've probably got mainly students listening to us. Uh, how can students and graduates uh, create ideas? Uh, what would be your top tips to stand out in a positive manner? Because everything is so competitive. Uh, so whether you're a fashion design student or a fashion communication student, how can that idea be truly original to help you to stand out and get noticed? I mean, obviously being true to themselves, but Students always want to have that lead on how can I make myself seen? Well, the thing is, I mean, uh, I hate kind of the word because as in most of the fashion um, system, it's always appropriate on word. But like the storytelling, it's now very, yeah. it, it's very important because uh, I've been telling this to, to, to all students and also designers that it's right now you have to put your face but, but you have to put your face meaning not you know going on socials and and having fun but putting your face to your ideas to your vision to your message to what you really want to do while you're doing this project uh, what changes do you want to make positive changes uh, responsibility i mean this is something i always tell to students whatever you're gonna start from tomorrow or yesterday you have to be responsible I mean, and responsible doesn't mean uh, just, you know, sustainable like collection, but responsible in many ways, responsible towards the community to support, you know, your, your, um, your common area, your neighborhood. I mean, this is something I think very important because uh, it's uh, something that we rediscovered. I was speaking before this morning with another person and was telling me, you know, nobody is going anymore in the city centers, you know, in the in the streets of the shopping, which is obviously yeah. not good. But people are discover, discovering local markets that before local markets, meaning local shops and local realities, which before they were not really kind of much, you know, considered because we were kind of uh, used to one lane and go to the same places and not really looking at, you know, the places you had near near you you know i mean in your city then when you travel obviously it's different because you're curious to discover new things so i think right now it's it's i mean you have to have really a message the message has to be i mean strong meaning not that it has to be like um shock or what it has to be something fundamental which before probably they were always in your like in your brand or entrepreneur identity, but it wasn't the first on the list. It was like before it was maybe more showing or or talking about other things, but now it's it's your priority. So it's about putting your face and really, uh, you, know, you know, put yeah. your face and say, this is what I want to do. And this is, um, so there's not really, um, you know, an answer to that. I think it's about personality, which comes out much more stronger now. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with, more with you. I, I, I'm always talking about the narrative. Tell us the narrative of your work uh, and make sure there's a fulfilling story in that. Who would you say perhaps are the really good brands that students could look at to see how they really tell their stories well? Well, um, so um, the thing is that, you know, communication is... Uh, is tricky because I think that if I have to take big brands, I have to say that there's not really someone that, um, I mean, now I'm going to tell the obvious Gucci yeah. because they are very constant. I mean, whether you like it or not, that's yep. a, an efficient communication because that's the world and it's kind of evolved and you use Gus Van Sant, then you use your friends, then you use the friends of the friends, then you use Rome, then you use, you know. So that's a well-constructed way of communicating a brand, which is a brand that now it's very linked to its designer. I mean, like Gucci and Alessandro Michele are quite on the same level. Yeah. When you talk about other brands, you cannot say that the designer comes out as the brand. It's always so that's I think a very successful way. And this is kind of, you know, a storytelling of your I mean, say neighborhood because Alessandro decided to give much emphasis to Rome, which is a yeah. city. And so this is something as a storytelling of yourself and of your vision. So that's I think it's 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 very um, successful. Then, um, then I think there is a all kind of the new generations of brands that are very, are very successful in uh, their communication. That I can, which maybe some of you will not know or or not, but like there is um, Charles La Jeffrey Loverboy from London, yeah. that he has a very strong vision on the community because he was you know came from nightlife and he brought this world into his you know into his collection so that's also a way of communication and it's very because when you think about him i mean you visualize it immediately so this is you know your world has to become very much what you then you know um, transmit i mean i got an example so marco rambaldi he's an italian designer he comes from bologna he brings his tradition Bologna, the roots, the politics, the Italian style, and that's very eradicated. And then at the same time, he's very, he's very, um, he's very keen to to support the all the LGBT community. So he did it in his show. So this is a way, you know, of saying, okay, this is me. This is my community. This is what I want to to say. So these are examples of a well-known brand to less well known and then there is also all the um, brands linked to responsible design which i think they have a story because obviously it's a story of or the community they're supporting so th there are different ways of doing it but that's great it's funny how all that tied up to the previous question where we were saying how uh, looking around your own local community where to go shopping perhaps it's all about being local and uh, perhaps being Global, global and local at the same time again. It's going back to those messages. So to look at who you are, about where you are, uh, Alessandro, obviously, Michele, uh, Rome. Uh, here we are at Academia where he studied and yet his headquarters are just behind us here. And he still loves that whole whole mixture of the old Roman, uh, the, feel, the feel of it. And also he refers always to books and films. And th that's his identity. And I think if young people continue to look at who their identity are through culture, they will locate themselves perhaps more wholly to have a, a real strong narrative to tell. Um, we should be getting some questions in now. I don't know if they're actually arriving, but uh, you can ask, uh, just to remind everybody, you can ask the questions on the chat and then Denise will read out your questions. I don't know if we have any in yet. Denise, are you there? Do you have any questions? This is when it gets tricky and it goes very yeah, silent. I know, but usually they don't ask questions. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, what well, they get into? They get into it. They get into it. We had a few. Yeah. They had a few no, last because, week because because maybe it's like they don't. They, we don't see them, so they're less shy. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. Denise, are there any questions there? 
Okay, Denise has gone quiet. She's probably finding her way through through okay. all the questions. Um, next uh, on Thursday, actually, I'm talking about uh, sustainability careers, so that's going to be interesting. I mean, that's a subject we can never really uh, avoid anymore. Sustainability. Uh, and ah, okay. Sorry, because is, she is came there. in. Sorry, Adrian. Uh, there I she is. This because... Okay. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> Here we have Denise. Here we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking for questions. Okay, uh, the okay. first question, uh, if you're ready, yeah? Um, we yeah. Can start. Okay. Yep. So the first question is from uh, Devinder. Devinder, I don't know how to pronounce it, from Delhi. Uh, okay. I really want international exposure and I'm graduating in 2021. Uh, what are the best international platforms? He asks. For exposure. Well, well yeah. Uh, Exposure. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, de uh, it depends. I mean, like for for um, like fashion designer, there is it. It's the international talent support. Uh, it's a contest based in Trieste, and it gives the chance to all students graduated or undergrad or that they're graduating to to send their collection. And if they're picked, they have a really fantastic platform where to be seen. Uh, well, there's also Vogue Talents, which gives the chance, you know, to be seen. It's a complete open platform where to send your work. And I think at the same time, I mean, you're graduating, so probably you're still thinking what you want to do next. So, um, I mean, uh, whether you want to go and, you know, go and work for a for a brand or in if it's uh, if you're a designer or it's also in communication if not if you think that you are on already want to do something by yourself i think that i mean instagram is a um, is a window that gives the chance to be seen and if it's used in a very smart and in you know intelligent and visionary way it could be really a a, a very quick way of getting that attention then uh, it depends what kind of attention but this could be you know the yeah. first uh, ideas that comes up in my mind yeah yeah well if, if if you've got those questions uh you can pop an email to denise uh you can leave, leave us a message and we can send you a list of uh vocal vocal graduate fashion where where you can get seen and we're happy to share that with you so you can always send that information on and, and what if perhaps you've got some career questions so that'd be quite good. Uh, are there some more questions, Denise? Uh, yes, and this is from Amanda. He says, what's the future of fashion magazines? <laughs> oh, so uh, the crystal ball moment now. Get yeah. your crystal ball out. And, uh... Denise, sorry, you have to repeat because sometimes the it comes a, a strange uh, noise sound. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm repeating. Uh, what's the future of fashion magazines? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, uh, fashion magazines are kind of, you know, struggling right now. But I do think that they're gonna, they're gonna remain. I mean, probably less because it's, uh, it's everything changes. But you know, it's like books. I mean, magazines, if they have the power to give a, a vision, a message, and the strength of using images to give also messages for social impact, I think they're gonna stay. So. Obviously, a um, magazine have to be, uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, Italian Vogue, it's not the case because it's always been kind of, it's always been revolutionary and also very, very edgy. But for the other magazines, which kind of focus just on fashion, they need to reinvent a little bit because it's not just about anymore seeing beautiful fashion shootings i mean okay but there has to be also a message behind and more something more visionary i, th I think it's a really good point about reinventing i mean reinventing goes through everything we're going to do now let's just reconsider what we're do doing and does it have that relevance anymore uh did you any more questions yes uh yes we have one from uh akansha okay and uh, yes, about um it's more related to the entry requirements uh because he asks uh what your portfolio should really speak about i don't know if he means for the admission in the course or as a okay uh, as a person who works in communication i'm not sure 
actually. well i mean the portfolio it's a little bit the um a little bit the roundup of what we discussed until now i mean it has to give has to be very your strong identity your message your vision and obviously i think the the research part also the reference part of where you get your ideas has to be really done really well because uh, consider that maybe you have the luck to bring physically your portfolio in front of I don't know me or Adrian but if you don't and you have to send it digitally you have to think it's like your mirror it's like yourself transporting to so it has to be very clear which doesn't mean that you have to write things yeah. but even image wise reference it's it has to give messages and reasons why so this is something fundamental perfect research is crucial to what we do yeah. and that whole narrative fundamental. And, and, any more questions Denise before yes. we exhaust Sarah no 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 I'm fine I, I, okay. I have fun to do this okay okay oh we have several questions that are arriving now so sorry because I'm reading them okay so there is a Carla okay who says oops I'm there. There are a lot. Okay. Uh, what you consider society will accept changes about sustainable fashion. So this is about sustainability. Um, so if society will accept changes about sustainable fashion. Why do we answer that one on Thursday? <laughs> Thursday <laughs> yeah, we're talking Thursday. all about sustainability. Yeah, yeah but my question Thursday. is, yes, yeah. because as I was saying before, it's about awareness and about, you know, uh, as media part, the fact of um you know telling consumers and common people where to i mean it has to become a a very um a very um natural way of see of saying things and people have to be have to get used to going to shops and asking for you know for responsible sustainable products excellent so i, I uh, but... see that eleanor is is connected so i say hi to her Eleanor Renfrew. Uh, that, that's my bestie. Yeah, I know. She has, I know. She has to be watching. No, no, no. I know. So I say hi to her because I know okay. her. So I haven't seen her for a while. Yeah, it was her birthday last week. So yeah. <laughs> she has to watch. Okay. Uh, any questions from Eleanor or anybody else? <laughs> yes, we have a question from Eleanor if you want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She likes the reference to shopping locally. Ah, because of the nice. pandemic and and says um that she's seeing uh graduates moving from the industry to producing craft and uh um responsible design so do you think uh that this will continue beyond this current situation in the sustainable way yeah i think so because i mean when i say sustainable it's responsible so obviously I think uh, when you, I mean, uh, you know, in fashion, you say I'm doing a sustainable collection, but it's not just about that. It's about being creating a responsible uh, community. So I think this is very important because each of us can do already the difference. Already talking about it's very important. And I see that the new generation is very aware and very conscious about wanting to make changes because the world that we are living, we as old generation, it's not what they want. So um, I think this is going to be much stronger and stronger. And I always repeat it. I just realized it. I don't see much TV, television, but the, when I see it um, and I see advertising, they're going to, they began to do advertising, talking about responsibility, sustainability. And so this is something that, you know, we know how powerful the, the message for television comes through. So this is, I think it's going to continue, it's going to get bigger and bigger. I think it's interesting how many of the questions are actually leading us to sustainability. And I talked today with about education and on Thursday it's about sustainability, but people want it. So obviously the message is actually getting out there and uh, it's already within our lives. I mean, I, I, I feel it's within my life. Uh, are there any more live questions, Denise? <laughs> okay, we have other questions, yes. Uh, one is from, uh, okay, Mikhail, who asks us, and this is our question about, uh, yes, also a life question, because he says, um, what is the advantage for a fashion design student 
to take a master in fashion communication as opposed to a master in fashion design. So how to uh, like mix these two words together. Can, can I say a couple of words here? Yeah, you go. Okay. Well, if you're going to do a master's, it's about specialization. You've done something general and now let's specialize perhaps. Um, does the world really need another dress designer? Ask yourself that. What is your special message as a dress designer perhaps? Uh, look for a, a, a master's course to specialize in something that your general knowledge from before can then be pushed in one direction where the industry actually might need you. And I think there are so many develops in communication around that area. It certainly is an area of uh, interest in the fashion in the fashion career uh, uh, in the fashion career way because there are perhaps more openings in that sector than there are in just being yet another fashion designer. I don't know how you feel about that, Sarah. No, I agree. I agree. I totally agree. So it's it's like. Think about your career path and think about how you're going to get into the fashion industry rather than just, I want to be, a, I want to be part of the fashion industry, I need to be a designer. Uh, it's more than that. Uh, the way you, you can actually have more effect on the industry. I think actually communication is changing much faster than design. Design is design. We're still, still seeing very much the same uh, collections, but the way we communicate and the way we sell fashion has changed so radically. Uh, in the past few years, that's where the difference is being made. Okay, so Denise, you're going to keep them coming? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, I will order. Uh, okay, um, and then we have, okay, so this is from, okay, okay, this is from uh, Patrick, he says, which role in fashion communication is the most required one, according to Sara, in fashion communication, which is the like the profile, the role that you think is more uh, like required in this moment? Well, uh, I mean, um, so like a social media manager in communication is probably the most requested right now because it's. Um, uh, the ones that you know brands communicate but i think it's not even about that or also uh the internal brand communication communication into the brand so it's the social and like and the physical that then it's uh, represents the brand but for sure social media is, it's very important but consider then social media it's not just about instagram eh? it's about you know communication 360 degrees but probably that could be the one that can be more requested right now it certainly needs an interesting extra area to explore. And don't forget when you're exploring a career, we don't really know, in, in, if you're studying a master's course, you don't really know what the careers are going to be tomorrow. So you need to be on a course that has a multiple, a multifaceted subject yeah. area so that you can actually create your own person, as Sarah did, create your own energy, your own person for tomorrow because we don't really know where the jobs are. If you think about what, 15 years ago, social media manager, people would say, what's that? <laughs> it didn't exist. So we have to think about having all those variety of skills so you can find your own way as well. Yeah, and, and moreover, I mean, I think it's uh, um, very important when, I mean, I, I, I've coordinated masters in the past. And what I like is that um, I think it's very important that when you end a master, you I mean, the most satisfying thing is knowing what you want to do. That probably can also be not doing what you studied until those months, which doesn't mean that the master wasn't successful, but made you understand really what are, you know, your priorities and what you really want to do. So this is something very important. And as Adrian was saying, you don't have to think, I mean, you, Michael think I asked, which is the most requested i can tell you this then i'm not you know i'm not someone that studies which is the most requested job but i can understand that you know social media manager is right important but when you begin a master you have to be curious to absorb everything and then put it together and you know bring it as a personal experience yeah totally okay denise uh, are we wrapping up or are we taking more questions we're taking more questions, but if you have time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You have time. Okay. Uh, Jane Deep asks us, how much should the I'm brand. Not hearing you. Okay. Do you hear me? 
Yes, now yes, okay. not the last minute. <laughs> okay, no, no problem. Sorry. Okay, so uh, Jane Deep says, how much should the brand focus on brand building on social media to build trust and be more visible? Well, I mean, before the brand has to have I'm kind of repetitive, it's vision and it's, uh, it's the message that they want to do. Then you do the brand building on, on Instagram, on social media, which is important. But before you need to have the, you know, you need to have the, how do you say, the material, I mean, the, the, the input and the reason why you want to communicate this. So you have to really have the content, sorry, you didn't come up the, the word. So it has to be, it has to be very important. So it's not that you open a brand and then you open social media. Before you open the brand, you constructed the storytelling, the reason why and everything. Then to communicate it, you use, I don't know, uh, Instagram to construct it. But also there, you need to think about long distance and not just, oh, today I post this and then tomorrow I'm going to think what to post. I mean, no, you have to have you know, a calendar, a why. I mean, it's like, you know, doing a magazine. When you do a magazine, you, con you construct contents, you know, you do a grill of, of ideas and then meanwhile you are, you know, cooking it, maybe other ideas come in, come in but you have to have a clear idea of what you want to communicate or what you want to show, your aesthetics, your messages. Okay. Thank you. And... We have another question from uh, Sabrina from Milan, who asks us, um, I've seen you, uh, Sara, uh, will be part of the new master in a of Academia Custume Moda in fashion communication, art direction. Uh, will you be formally teaching in this course? Uh, you're going to have teachers. I'm going to be present, but I'm not going to be a formal teacher that you're going to see frequently, but obviously I'm going to be present, yes. Okay, that was an easy answer. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was. Okay, yeah. And uh, also, uh, Sabrina, for any information we can share. What did, sorry, Adrian, what did you say before? Because it came, I don't know why I, I have... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just so well. Yes. <laughs> I, I said it was an easy answer. You're going to be there. They won't see you every day, but you'll be there. And also the <laughs> fact that, that, that we're now opening in Milan, it makes a sense for this subject area. Because for Italy, communication is Milan. It's not Rome. So it's great that we can move down to Milan and do this and share those experiences with sure. you because uh, it's the right place to do it. And that's what we believe in. I, I don't know if we should have any more questions, Denise, or should we be wrapping up? Because everybody else probably have got other calls to move on to. Okay. Just uh, one or two questions, very quick. Okay. Uh, okay. One question is from Anuzari. And uh, I can say that she asked a question and there are also other two people who are asking more or less the same question. So I would say just for her. And uh, she says, is visual merchandising part of fashion communication? So she makes a uh, like. Well, I mean, the, the beauty about um, passion is that um, it's, 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 um, it's a big community and you have to be multitasking. So. I always say if you begin um, a master in communication and visual arts and then you think that you would want to be a visual merchandising, it's nothing impossible because, I mean, the beauty of creativity is that you can invent yourself. I mean, I started doing something and in my 25 years career, I did many experiences, always in the fashion industry, but this didn't uh, kind of uh, stop me of doing events, digital events, communication, uh, I mean, everything. So I, to the answer, I would say yes. But obviously, I mean, you cannot, I mean, you have to have at least a path where you want to go, but not because then you cannot change it, but at least to give, you know, kind of a standard and, a, and, um, and kind of a rhythm for yourself. Because if not, the, the easy thing is that if you have too many inputs at the beginning, then you get lost. You begin with your passion and then, I mean, you're all in ages that, sorry, just a second. And uh, sorry, it was, and uh, I mean, it's, uh, we, you're all in an age between 
uh, when you do a master from 23 to 25, I mean, that thing changes in life. So, I mean, be ready to change, but at least not to confuse yourself to follow what you really like and your vision at that moment. Then, you know, experiences make you see things in a different way. Excellent. Okay, Didis? Okay, I think, yes, we, we have answered all the questions. Uh, some questions are repeated, some uh, to Eduardo, who asked us uh, the professional roles in fashion communication after the pandemic, I would say the same thing that Sarah I'm probably said. I'm hearing you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, uh, yes, now, okay. yes, but not before. Sorry, yeah. I don't know. Sorry, no, no problem. No problem at all. Okay, uh, I was saying that Eduardo probably joined um, a few minutes ago, I'm not sure, but he asked us, which will be the new professional roles in fashion communication after the pandemic, which I think is more or less what you already said about the social media and or if you have on any suggestion. Well, uh, as social media also responsible and sustainable communication, I mean, because obviously in big brands and small brands, uh, the fact of being responsible is going to become more common and common. So you need to have people that know about it. So this is also a new a new role that they're already, but not so focus okay and, and we could discuss that on thursday yes okay about so, that yes, exactly. wait, who are you talking on thursday just for curiosity uh denise do you want to introduce thursday yes exactly i i have already shared uh okay right now if you should see it uh, I have shared the invitation ah, okay. to next. Federico Brugnoli. Okay. Exactly, the yeah. invitation to next okay. uh, webinar. And okay. uh, yeah. we'll talk, uh, we will be talking. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about fashion sustainability. So if you like this, uh, uh, this particular area of fashion, this is the right moment to, to register. Okay. And uh, to everyone who needs more information about the course, uh, the Master in Fashion Communication, uh, you can send us uh, your questions if you have any, or if you need any further information, we'll be able to send it uh, right after the, the webinar. And um, I will thank uh, Sara for joining us today. And also thank everyone. you for having me. Thank you, Regina. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. No, no, it's Thank you. Pleasure. And <laughs> you're finished or no? Yep. Okay. I don't see all We've the wrapped up. Okay. <laughs> Grazie. Okay. And thank you and see you soon. Not thank by you. deal. Hopefully real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Grazie. Bye. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.